Hello, Sybil. Welcome to Unleashing Light. So I have Sybil Shelton Ford here, who is a yoga teacher for both children and adults, um, also certified in yoga therapy, as well as being a life coach slash health coach, um, bringing her services to many, many people, um, spending time between Michigan and Florida and maybe online services everywhere in between. So Sybil, if you just want to tell us a little bit about how you got into yoga and your journey um, going forward. Sure. Thanks, Liz. Well, thank you for having me. This is awesome. So my journey into yoga started in late 1997 mm -hmm. after I had my third child. So I had three kids in four years, <laughs> which was more overwhelming than I thought. And so at our local community college, we had this lovely, he was an older gentleman and he would have gentle yoga. And it was literally the lie, do a few stretches, lie on the floor and meditate. My so pretty much yoga. it was like, <laughs> it was like nap time, which is yep. what I needed because I was sleep deprived. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I used to love going, it was like a two hour class, but it didn't seem like it. And it was the perfect thing. And I thought, oh, this is so nice. And because I really didn't know what yoga was, and I said, Oh, you should just take this class and you can just lay on the floor and stretch and sleep or whatever. So I did. <laughs> and then a few years later, and um, I went on a fitness journey and I got, I was really kind of not uh, good to my body, and I ended up hurting my knee and I needed surgery. <laughs> So I was in physical therapy for a while and never really got my range of motion back. And so I remembered yoga and I thought, I wonder if that can help. So I really got into yoga for the physical benefits mm -hmm. and then later decided to become certified. So for my first certification, because I really just wanted to keep it physical, was in fitness yoga. Mm -hmm. And then... I realized that that was, those were like weekend trainings. It wasn't really enough. Like you couldn't teach in a yoga studio. Most people didn't take you seriously. And I just wanted to learn more because I'm just sort of one, I'm a person that's always wanting to learn and going, well, if that's not good enough, I'll just go to the next thing. So I got my 200 hour training, but I kept saying, I'm not going to pay attention to anything else except for all the physical things because <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to get into all of the spiritual stuff and if there is any or whatever any but of those feelings that we have any of that stuff <laughs> but then when I went through it I remember in the beginning our teacher said most of you are probably here for the physical stuff which is fine it's great if that's all you want to take with you great but I ask you just to be open to listening to the philosophy and the philosophy then changed my life <laughs> In what way? So what was the philosophy that was explained to you and what was the impact that it really had on you? So the philosophy was explained as yoga is sort of the science of life mm -hmm. and that the main goal of yoga is to, our teacher um, said, was to stop or solve and not solve I can't remember what the wording was but was to end the root cause of our pain and suffering and so then he said what do you think the root cause of your pain and suffering is so we're saying it's society it's abusive relationships it's the government it's and he said no not really he said what it is is your reaction to it he said the root cause of your pain and suffering comes from the fluctuations of your mind and so the purpose of yoga is to more or less not control your emotions, but control sort of your mental reactions to the emotions. And, and those sometimes reactions come out more physical or mm -hmm. how you react to it. Yeah. And he said, if you look at things as, I mean, some things are absolutely horrific and some things are absolutely glorious, but most things are, they're, they're neutral. And he gave this example of, he said, there's two children sitting in a room and they're playing. And then a dog walks in. And one child hugs the dog and kisses the dog and plays with the dog. And the other child runs away screaming. He said, well, so is the dog good or bad? It's neither. It's just a dog. And the dog just ran into the room. It's your perception. And so yoga is really about looking at our perceptions and how we react to them. And it's, it's, 
<laughs> so deeper than that, but that's my the simplest way of looking at things. And so it's sort of like the first sort of um, mental health, if you will, model. Mm -hmm. And everything else falls into it. And then the tools of the asana, the poses, the breath work, the hand gestures or mudras, the meditations, all of that are tools to ultimately still our body, still our breath, clear things so that we can deal with what's going on in our minds. And I thought, that's brilliant. I have to do that. Mm -hmm. Good <laughs> I have to teach you. that. <laughs> yeah, so you really embraced that. So you got then your 200 hour certification. And I did. Kind of feeling good and purposeful yeah. and meaningful. And then you went on to get a yoga therapy certification. So yeah, I knew that because again, um, <laughs> I'm the kind of person that's always like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? You know, I could, I could be doing or should be doing. And um, in order to kind of keep my affiliation to a yoga organization, you have to have so many continuing education credits, sort of like an education, because I was a classroom teacher, you have to keep taking courses to keep your license. Mm -hmm. And so when I did that in education, I thought if I'm going to keep taking classes, I'm getting my master. Like <laughs> it's the same money. <laughs> so that's yeah. kind of how I saw it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get the masters of yoga, which is the 500 <laughs> level. And I was, and kind of like a master's degree is like a specialty degree mm -hmm. in yoga. A 500 hour is similar. Mm -hmm. It's a specialty and people can pick whatever specialty that, that they want. And I thought, ooh, this yoga therapy thing seems really cool. Mm -hmm. And I was more interested at first in, in the structural, like uh, understanding more of the body. Mm -hmm. But then, um, and it was just, but at that time it was hard because you had to like go away for three months. And I had three little kids. I'm like, I can't leave my kids for three months. Mm -hmm. So then I found something that worked better for me some of it was homework, some of it you went away for a week or two, kind of like what I do with my 200 hour and you did that for two years. And, but that was more, um, it was more getting into the sort of the deeper aspects of yoga and how they affect the mind. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, and it was a different lineage than it was for my 200 hour, which is kind of cool too, to kind of see how the different approaches to things. But uh, I, that was a very intense, um, beautiful, a wonderful, like deep experience to go through as well. It was really less, it, we studied asana, but it's really the energetics of asana. And it was less about asana than the more subtle things, mm -hmm. things that we tend to want to avoid. So it's kind of like ripping yourself apart so you can put yourself back together, which was, that's like the way I can explain it. Beautiful breaking open, right? Yes, <laughs> so absolutely. For somebody, for somebody who's kind of, well, I get what, you know, you, I've heard a little bit about yoga. I know you guys bend in these weird positions and blah, blah, blah. And, but yoga therapy, I've never heard about that. How do you explain that in the easiest way possible to somebody who really has no idea what that is? So the way I look about, the way I think about yoga therapy is it's very specified. Mm -hmm. So some people work in yoga therapy almost like a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. So that you might find a yoga therapist that really specializes in that. Um, others like for me look more about what's going on in the mind and so right now my passion right now is really helping using yoga tools very specific in a very specific order a very specific way mm -hmm. um and then taking the tools that you can practice at home so that, because my really it has to be you have to do it consistently and it can't always be with a teacher because it's expensive mm -hmm. how do you help them do it at home but it's for me, it's in a very specific way to deal with chronic anxious feelings. Okay. So chronic anxious feelings in children and chronic anxious feelings in adults, because <laughs> the world is just really anxious right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned for both adults and children mm -hmm. and families because anxiety or anxious feelings can be really contagious. Mm -hmm. And to really empower people on how to 
not stop anxiety because we need it. It's actually um, a defense mechanism that tells us something is wrong. It's our bodies preparing to fight, flee, freeze, something, you know, it's something saying, woo, there's a danger. And so your heart races and your stomach kind of gets this pit feeling and you start to sweat and whatever. But we're staying in that chronic state when there is no danger. And we're not our minds keep thinking there's a danger when there's no danger present and it's hard to live that way helping their central nervous system yes basically into the moment yes and that's kind of what we're doing and there's different ways to approach it um and what i would want to provide is, is a set of tools for that tools for movement. It doesn't have to be yoga. I mean, if you don't feel like doing a sun citation, go out for a walk, (laughs) like any type of movement. Mm -hmm. And then you can kind of work on the breath and you can work on the visualization. You can work on the mindset shifts. You can do all of that. And it doesn't have to be an hour a day. It's an hour with me once a week, but, you know, giving you tools to do at home and that five minute in the morning, five minute at night practice it's just like um if you were in the gym trying to get more fit you know you you takes time before you can lift a heavier weight it's the same type of thing it builds over time so you can more efficiently when the anxious feelings come you can more efficiently move from ah to chill you can kind of talk yourself off the ceiling efficiently and that's kind of what you want. You don't want anxiety. Oh, we never want to feel anxious. You do. It's 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 just a feeling like anything else. You just don't want to live there. Right. Yeah. So. And so many of us forget how to breathe, right? Like yes. the tool is just, you might not be able to respond with the best words or, you know, anything like that, but you have your breath, right? Yeah. We can use that. We can. And one of the things too, is when you're kind of in the moment of the anxiety, sometimes when people say like, I myself, one of the reasons that I was really attracted to is because yoga has helped me deal with mine, Mm -hmm. my own personal anxiety. Um, It got so bad to where I, my doctor really wanted me to be medicated. And I was like, I'll do anything to not have to do that. I mean, if I had to, I had to, Mm -hmm. but I was going to try everything else. And what I've noticed is when I'm in that moment, it's hard to take a breath. You can't settle, but it does help to move, do something, jumping jacks, walk outside, get out, you know, something. Usually movement helps. And then once the, all those anxious chemicals have a place to go, then you can breathe, then you can settle down. So it, yes, you want to come back to the breath, but sometimes you have to uh, get rid of the, the thing. And then you can go, okay, I'm, I'm calm now. I can take that breath and then come back down. So, yeah. So can you speak to some of like the beautiful breaking open that you had that made you so passionate about this, where you were like, I need to teach this to other people and what yeah. you saw in yourself, old Sybil versus current Sybil. <laughs> <laughs> Um, wow. Uh, how do I begin with that? Um, with the yoga Any therapy parts you want to share. Yeah, I think um it kind of began with like I said before, I kind of beat myself up just and it I knew better because I can sometimes like other people live in their ego. <laughs> And I was trying to lose this baby weight and I was working really hard. And I mean, it wasn't just my knee. My, that's where I had to have the surgery, but my back was out of whack. I just had all these different muscle um, imbalances is the way I'll put it. And when I started practicing more asana and really understanding the structure, many of those, or I'll say all of those things, they just sort of they work themselves out. And it was like, oh my gosh, I can stand up straighter. I can, it's easier for me to do certain exercises in the gym. I have a better breath capacity. And I just saw kind of like that was this missing thing. And I knew a lot of people that were working out that were always in pain. Like they would never talk about their neck hurt or their back hurt or man, my hip is bothering me. They would still kind of pound it out at the gym. The thing that was missing was that balance of muscle. So that's kind of where the passion started. 
But then what I noticed is after I started taking my a lot of my own yoga classes with different teachers and having a home practice that it started to transcend. Yes, there was a physical part, but then it, tra- it was something else. It was like the sort of feeling of like in the beginning, especially I'll use the term and hopefully it's okay to say this. It's like being yoga stone. You're just kind of like, <sighs> like you forget, <laughs> like, where am I? <laughs> where did I put my car keys? How do I get home? Like, that's how I, it's just kind of like this, like, whoa. And, and I would see other people in class feel the same thing. I mean, it is, you don't stay up there, but it's kind of like, oh my gosh. And you, there, nothing else quite does it. I've had a runner's high before. I've had a swimmer's high before, but it's not the same as this is what I call yoga stone. It's not the same. It's different, but it's sort of, changes stuff and you kind of I don't know it stays with you a long time Mm -hmm. and I thought if you can start spreading some of that maybe people will start to just feel better and it's not just the physical stuff but the physical stuff is awesome Mm -hmm. but it's bigger than that so that kept me going and I remember even when I was teaching and when I teach I always teach at a lower level than what my students can do And I don't show them every single thing all the time. It depends on who's in front of me. But you kind of get that energy from them. So when you leave after class, it's kind of like, it's sort of this shared energy. And it's like, this is, this stuff is good. Like I can't, you can't bottle this thing. Mm -hmm. And it sustains when you have this practice at home, when you continue just to do a little bit most days of the week. So that was kind of that first thing. And then I decided that, you know, being a classroom teacher and kind of seeing this shift, there is, has been a shift in children Mm. probably over the last 15 years. They're not the same. Um, And and it doesn't, and I've seen the shift happen because I've worked with kids or in agencies for children for a long time, both, and it doesn't matter the socioeconomics, which I've worked with Head Start. I've worked with like uh, an elite suburban school Mm -hmm. and you see the same types. I mean, some things are definitely different, but you see similar behavior. Sometimes it- When you say you see this shift, like what's the shift that you're seeing? Oh. Like in a good shift with yoga or like kids that aren't getting yoga and it's shifting. Well, I'm just, I'm saying just the overall with kids that I'm seeing the behaviors that you see in a classroom. It doesn't matter where the classroom is. It's, they can be more combative. The children can definitely see higher anxiety. You see depression, I'm talking about in kindergarten. When you start seeing that kind of anxiety and that kind of almost depression in five-year-olds, that's alarming. Yeah. And so then I got really passionate about sharing that with kids. So I started with family yoga. I also just teach, I have for the last, I don't know how many years I've been, I've been teaching in different preschools, childcare centers. And yes, it's fun because you want to make it fun because they're kids, but I always try to teach them a tool, a tool of when you feel like this. And we talk about, you know, have you ever felt like it? Whatever it is, strong feelings, big feelings, this is one thing you can do. And they remember because when they, you come back the next week and you'll have kids four years old saying, Miss Sybil, I was mad, but then I did balloon breath and I felt better. Like they remember. (laughs) And they they practice it. (laughs) And they practice. And then you get little notes from their parents going, who have never met me, because I usually come during the school day. And they'll say, you know, they said this and I saw them doing this. And they said, you taught, this is awesome. So that was another thing like it it works. (laughs) If you do it, it works. So that was kind of that. It's almost like, you know, the answer from the universe, like this is the right path. This is the, that you're supposed to do this. 
so yeah then it was you know for my own opening it was you know it was it was different i think that got the big there was shifts all the time and the shifts keep happening where it just becomes you know you keep doing it you keep getting better but then you there's more to learn <laughs> so you can keep getting better yeah <laughs> And you also, it sounds like incorporated a lot of health and nutrition and doing mm -hmm. health coaching, because obviously that affects our mind and body as well. Absolutely. So how are you drawing that into your services with people and the practice yeah. you do personally as well? So I, I started out with health coaching simply because I wanted to help people with their health journey, like whatever it was. I didn't really have a niche anybody that wanted to work with me and they wanted to get healthier mm -hmm. i wasn't really good at the whole business part <laughs> you know if they wanted to whatever that meant um and i would i only have so far worked with one-on-one -on -one clients most of the people that i work with are women and most of them want to lose weight mm -hmm. so we kind of that's kind of what they want i try to look at things holistically and I kind of tell them we're going to look at this sort of holistically um and what that means is food is just one part but sometimes your food choices are actually driven by other things mm -hmm. and we sort of we kind of do that deep peel of the other things like what because every this is how I look at it like everybody kind of knows what to do you know, you, you know, the apple is better than the Twinkie, <laughs> right? We <You> know it's, <laughs> it's they just need help with how to do it consistently and what it can look like. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So I started with that. But then when I got really more into this sort of the anxiety pieces, I really wanted to, and I haven't done it yet because I haven't kind of figured out how it's going to all fit in there mm -hmm. um, to draw the going back to sort of the con, having more, um, I, I'm going to say control of the mind, even though you can't really control all your thoughts. That's not the point. It's just not, it's just kind of, kind of looking at them from a distance and going, oh, that's interesting and not really buying into <laughs> it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That how does food then affect that because now i am a nutrition geek so i anything that looks interesting about nutrition i will like it's like a sponge and i was watching a um it's kind of like a it's kind of what we're doing right now an interview on youtube where there was a doctor that talked about um how certain how foods can start to literally affect our dna and and the ramifications of that and i thought and that then will affects the mind you know it, it's like everything is all connected so i really wanted to bring that piece in mm -hmm. to how what you're choosing to put in your mouth may have a deep effect on your chronic anxious feelings and really wanted to get back to the mindful eating practice, just practicing, but also kind of like in yoga, we do body scans all the time. I don't know if you've ever done any kind of like doing that body scan after maybe an hour or so after you've eaten mm -hmm. and see what you notice. Because sometimes we just don't even notice. We may not notice that maybe our our joints are inflamed. Mm -hmm we may not yeah. notice you know we may, that may be right behind our eyes are just a little tired whatever it is and going hmm that's interesting and is that what's supposed to happen <laughs> you know and, and kind of <laughs> then looking at if we start to clean that up a bit and do the same thing now how do you feel because you have to kind of go back to what's it, what is this doing to me and so it takes a lot of mindful practice and how that might affect you your emotions mm -hmm. and i did the same thing because i used to love coffee love love coffee but mm -hmm. i had some of the worst anxiety attacks mm -hmm. after you know not all the time but when they were terrible i had coffee that day 
Yeah. And so when I took that thing out and I was sad, I was really yeah. sad. <laughs> it was so, it was traumatizing. <laughs> but the panic attacks had cut like by three fourths. And it was just that one thing. Right. <laughs> and it's really interesting too. I think, you know, some people that maybe haven't gone into yoga very much or really dove deeper into connecting inward, like we think all our feelings are up here. Yes. Like, oh, no, no, no. The They're in the gut. Here. They're in our body, and yes. our gut, in our belly, in our throat, in our fingers. They're everywhere. And so it's like, oh, so that like pulsating pain in my calf. <laughs> Like that's maybe a sensation, meaning it's a feeling. So it's kind of like right. you can power through the day and not feel anything. Like right. we just numb ourselves out. So bringing ourselves back in and really, really doing the self-study. is so Yeah. Cool. And that's a big one. And it takes work. That's another thing too. People, I think one thing so instantly it doesn't work that way. You have to, it takes work and you have to want it bad enough. You have to decide, I'm so tired of feeling whatever that I'm willing to say, I have to do this. Yeah. And it, you know, and it's something that you build over time. It's not like all of a sudden you're perfect. It's like, no, it might take a long time mm -hmm. to kind of go through this. Yeah. Kind of like going through the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so how can people find you if they want to reach out and get some tips from you? Is there a yeah. website, email? Yeah. So I do have a website. It's um, asyouareyoga.com. Mm -hmm. So you can send me a message through there. I can be found on Facebook. It's just my name, Sybil Shelton Ford. I'm on Instagram. Now it's a little bit longer. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's as you are yoga and yum with a period in between every word <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> as you are yoga and yum but yeah those are the the places that you can find me all right and any little just last tip of a go-to for like maybe a favorite pose or a favorite go-to healthy snack something that is <laughs> in your regular practice that you do Wow. I have a lot of regular practice. <laughs> Your easiest one, the easiest <laughs> one for people to be like, I think I can do that. Right now it's eat to, this is me, is eat more fruit. People are afraid of it. Um, try to, you know, I have been playing with it myself going, because we all have like the sugar fear, keep mm. the fiber in it, eat, eat more fruit. <laughs> Well, it's getting warmer out, at least in some areas. Yes. So smoothies, <laughs> fruit salads. Yes, it's an easy thing to just yep. pick up, peel a banana, eat it. You know, it's absolutely you don't, to, you don't even have to cook it. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. It's fast food. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sybil, so much for being here. I really appreciate your time, your story, and your gifts. And I'm hoping people find you and can receive that as well. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. Have a blessed day. You too. <laughs>